Little Cindy Lou Who, taking possibly the shortest steps ever taken on a baseball field. She just wanted to make it close in the race with the mascot, showing off the speed. What an upset there. And Rob DeFranco will be looking to upset a few Mavericks batters in his first appearance ever in an FCBL game. But Ryan Coppinger had something else in mind. Singles on the very first pitch of the game. Cop would move himself over to second base in scoring position. And Rob Fogenkamp, he lines one hard, but it's right at first base. It's caught and Coppinger is doubled up. This will become a consistent trend to the second. Mavericks with runners on the corners, but doubled up again. That wraps up the frame. The Mavericks had at least one runner in scoring position in every inning except the ninth. North Shore at the plate now. They capitalized on small ball. This is also a theme of the night. Joe Love lays down a perfect bunt. His bases loaded, no out. And Blaze Lazinski to the plate. They call him the Seacoast Slayer for good reason. Last one to right center. Clears the bases. Make it six RBI in the last two meetings for the home run and now a triple for Lazinski. So hold on a second. The Navigators looking to load the bases in the third, but Rob Hogenkamp said no. Diving stop throws to second on his backside and gets Biggio. Now offense coming all day for TJ Lynch. He was doing it. What a smooth swing he's got going right now. Starts the top of the fourth with a single to right. Clear Ardisa would work his way over to third. Not an unfamiliar sight as we see Mavericks in scoring position, but this time James Navant, he's going to bring him home and then some. Chris Del Debio scores from second. Seacoast finally on the board. It took till the fourth inning, but here it is, five to two. Still two outs. Chris Hoyt, he puts one in play. Awkward play for the third baseman. He beats out the throw to first. Navant comes all the way around from second to score, and it's five to three. Seacoast climbing their way back into this one. But the Mavericks still not done in the fourth frame. Coppinger, a one-man wrecking crew out there tonight, slaps one into left. Gonzalez is going to come all the way around from second. Five to four, the Mavericks right back in this one. To the fifth, Lynch again doing his thing, starting things off with a single. This guy is just swinging the bat like no other. And after allowing a walk to Clay Ardiser, it would be the end of the night for Rob DeFranco. Wiseman's gonna take the rock with first and second and no outs. And Wiseman, pitching with a spot of trouble, he tries to put one past Del Debio. Del Debio, though, puts a perfect punt down the third baseline, giving the Navigators a taste of their own medicine. Now we get bases loaded, no outs. Mavericks looking to tie or blow this one open. And Victor Sorrento, pitch hitting, he draws a walk. Earns himself a walk the hard way. Lynch strolls in from third. It's five to four. Bases loaded. Still no outs. A hard wrap by James Devon. He was the hero last time, but this time he hits it right at Connor Biggio. Another double play, devastating the Mavericks offense. Wiseman would get out of the inning on the next batter and preserve the one-run lead. So we go to the sixth. Of course, it's more TJ Lynch. They get three hits to right field for the slugger. This one's going to score Coppinger from second after the errant throw, and we are all tied at six in the sixth inning. But the Mavs were not done. Our Deeser, he's going to give it a ride to left center. Lynch is going to come around from second and score easy, and the Mavericks have taken the lead unbelievably seven to six, heading to the bottom of the six. But how familiar does this one look? First and second, no outs. Calvin Graves, another perfectly laid punt. No play anywhere to be had. It's bases loaded for the Navigators. And that would be the end of the night for Boschman. Five innings pitched, eight runs allowed on 11 hits. So Brad Applin would step into the fire, looking to protect that one run lead. But Alex Marcakis, after fouling off four consecutive pitches, plays one up the middle. The Mavericks only get one on the play. So a run scores, and it's still runners on the corners. The Navigators would cash in big time. Timmy Hendricks, he's the top hitter for this North Shore lineup, shows us just why right there. Belts one on the 2-2 pitch to right center. Marcakis and Biggio scores. Navigators right back up by two, just as quick as they were down. But Coppinger trying everything he can to get them back into this. Flares one in the left with two down. Gonzalez is going to come around and score. But Chris Hoyt caught in no man's land between second and third. The inning is over after that base running error. 
And Chris White will have to learn. You gotta be easy when you're going around the bases, especially when you're playing down one. Such a crucial run, the Magrix left off the field. To the top of the eighth now. Del Debio, he pushes one on the ground into left field. It's shallow. Lynch on his horse sprinting. He is out at home plate. Unbelievable. Another Maverick thrown out in a tough situation. The game tying run has held off the scoreboard, and the Navigators hold on one more time. And that would be the last chance Seacoast would get. Kyle Gothier in for the close. The Mavericks stood no chance against him. Perfect placement on the outside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Navigators take this one by a final of 9-8. They own the season series 6-2. No surprises here in the box score. Coppinger, a great game. 4-4. Four for four, Raises his average to 360. Here's what manager Dave Adam had to say after the game. Yeah, a little short. Uh, yeah, we hit the hell out of the ball today. Um, scored a lot of runs. Um, you know, a couple of mistakes, um, trying to field ground balls, little punts, kind of hurt us a little bit. I think it cost us a few runs if we could have handled uh, some punts the right way. Awesome. You guys are 2-6 and six against the Navigators. What is it about this team that gives you so much trouble? Yeah, I don't know. They're kind of scrappy, you know. They don't really hit for a lot of power, but they put the ball in play. And uh, they seem to uh, play really good defense. They hop around like that. Yeah, I mean, that's the story of our season, man. I mean, you know, we win one, lose one. Uh, win one, lose one. We haven't been able to really break through that four with that 500 mark to really get rolling. So, uh, yeah, I mean, all we can do is uh, try our best tomorrow. And it certainly was an important game for the Mavericks. We're looking to make it three in a row. Instead, they fall two games back of the Brockton Rocks and the Pittsfield Suns. Just one and a half games behind Old Orchard in that last playoff spot, but it's an uphill battle from here. Three games against the Rocks, that could be good for the Mavericks, but the league-leading Sharks and then two against the Silver Knights, it is a tough road, and then traveling to North Shore again, a place where they have only won once all season long. Before wrapping things up with the Dirt Dogs on August 10th at home. Well, that's going to do it from Fraser Field here on Thursday night. Another tough, heartbreaking loss for the Mavericks to the North Shore Navigators. Navigators certainly have their number this year, but the Mavericks will look to continue to push towards the playoffs. It is not over yet. Less than 10 games left in the regular season. Continue to follow this team on the website, SeacoastMavericks.com. Craig Rauta signing off on another episode of Maverick Spotlight. Have a great start to your weekend this Friday, and we will see you with more baseball video highlights on our next show.